Champs are go. The 19th A-League men's competition. This could see it. Wouldn't you know it? Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. The fairy tale is complete. The Central Coast Mariners, champions of Australia. Hello, I'm James Dodd, and welcome to the Isuzu Ute A League Highlight Show. Round 25 got underway at Sky Stadium in New Zealand, where Wellington Phoenix hosted Melbourne Victory. In a contest that pitted second against third, Wellington came into the clash knowing a win would not only send them back to the top of the ladder, but also guarantee themselves a top two finish come the end of the regular season. As for victory, Tony Popovich's team arrived in Wellington still aiming to catch the two sides above them, and they fancy their chances of getting a result, especially given the fact golden boot leader Bruno Fornaroli has scored at least one goal in his last five games against the Knicks in New Zealand. Your match commentators at Sky Stadium are Jacob Spoonley and Jason Pine. Sees the ball get away from him. Fornaroli. He brings Ben Falami in. Sermon with some work to do. Ben Falami ruffles the outside of Alex Paulson's net. Probably the first chance Paulson's been unsure about the destination of the football. Ben Falami feeds Fornaroli. He only needs a sniff. Bruno doesn't get it this time, but frees up to Aore. That took a nick off in Sermon and goes behind for a corner. He scores very few A-League men's goals, Adama Traore, just four in this his 224th match. Barbarousas with old. Drops the shoulder onto his left face with the right foot. Paul Izzo had done the maths in his head, knew that was flying wide from Ben Old. Well, given away now, and here are a couple of those players. Bruno Fornaroli, saved by Paulson. As close as victory have come, and unsurprisingly, it was Bruno Fornaroli to the fore. It would bring them to within two points of both Wellington and the Mariners. Economides towards the far post, and Sam Sutton and Eli Adams together. He expected the net to bulge as Eli Adams arrived. Draft excluder behind the wall for victory. It's Costa Barbarousas. It's saved by Izzo. And not tucked home by Ben Ole, who had an opportunity to seize upon the rebound. Well, he puts it on the goalkeeper's side, and Paul Izzo gets hands on that one. Pushes it away, but pushes it straight into Ben Ole. And I think the only thing that saves the Melbourne Victory custodian is there is the pace that he gets that ball on. It's into the six yard area and into the back of the net. And would you believe it? Finn Sermon with his first A League men's goal has won it for Wellington. Delirium in the capital. Finn Sermon, the big centre back. The majority of the night has been marshalling Bruno Fornaroli. And then right at the death. As they did last time, the Wellington Phoenix have come up with the moment. And it's the big centre-back who bludgeons his way through the victory defence and gets his head on that one. Any suggestion of an offside, it looks close. Wonderful ball in. Great delivery from Van Haddam. Sermon gets the first touch. I think it's come off Miranda. It's simply the pressure. It's the two defensive titans go up against each other. Finn Sermon gets that one in, wins the margin and possibly, possibly Piney wins the game. A dramatic ending to the game in Wellington as the Phoenix snatched the win in the dying stages thanks to Finn Sermon's 95th minute winner, a goal which pushes Wellington back to the top of the ladder. Friday night's action continued at Cooper's Stadium where Adelaide United hosted MacArthur FC. With their finals hopes still intact, Colvitz Adelaide knew a fourth straight win in the league would move them to within striking distance of the top six with three games left to play. Meanwhile, Milais Dajovski's MacArthur arrived in South Australia well positioned inside the finals places, but a fourth loss in five matches would leave them looking over their shoulder at the chasing pack. Your match commentators for this one are Daniel McBreen and Simon Hill. A couple of assists for two of Viren Kundas goals as well against Western United the week before, and those two combining here again. Oh, that's unbelievable! Oh, my word! That is what they came to see tonight. That is a peach of a hit from Nestor Irakunda. 
It brought both me and Daniel McBreen out of our seats. What a talent. What a goal. Punchy ball in towards it for circuits. Good football by the Reds. They create the space. Down the right for Stefan Mork. Disguise pass to Iran Kunda. And cleared virtually off the line by Yadi Nikolaou. Might have got a, a glob to the face from his own goalkeeper. Certainly had a much better view of it than we did. Now they get to a bit of space. Going to hit one. Oh, good try. Well, he's never scored for Adelaide United, but he wasn't far off there. That was some hit. Very fortunate to get through for Iran Kunda. Might pull the trigger, thought about it. Kitto, the cutback. Good save, Kurto, to deny Mork. And then blazed wide. Back in by De Silva. Out again by Van der Sarg, and Adelaide survive, and now they've got the whistle to relieve that pressure for the foul on Iran Kunda. Well, that arm definitely moves towards Iran Kunda. Here comes the card, what colour is it? Yellow is cancelled, red is produced, and the balls are down to ten. Cross is not a bad one, off the chest of Jermaine, and Aria Fjol stuns Cooper Stadium! Very cleverly done by Valer Jermaine, and the two Bulls supporters are the happiest people Inside a jam-packed Cooper Stadium, out of nothing, the ten men of MacArthur are all square. The Silver's quarter. Heavy back to him. Oh, Red's defender, the Silver back post, 2-1! I don't believe it, Tommy Smith at the back stick, and the ten men have come from one goal down to lead 2-1. Quite extraordinary. They're having a long old look at it. It certainly struck the arm. Penalty. The biggest cheer of the night. If he saves this, surely MacArthur are home for the three points. It's Nestor Irakonde, he does save it! I literally can't believe what I'm seeing. So goalkeeper Philip Curto proving to be the hero in Adelaide as the Bulls staged an incredible comeback to not only boost their finals chances, but also dent Adelaide's in the process. Saturday's action began at the regional football facility in Tarnit, where Western United hosted defending champions Central Coast Mariners. Finally off the foot of the ladder, John Aloisi's side were going in search of their seventh win of the campaign as they continue their strong end to the regular season, while Mark Jackson's Mariners arrived in Victoria knowing only a win would do as they look to regain top spot in the league following Wellington's win over Melbourne victory. Your match commentators in Tarnit are Gray Skill and Simon Hill. And the Mariners come away with the ball. Docker trying to float it into the path of Nisbet, which he's done so successfully. Nisbet went near post, and he wasn't too far away. The Mariners turn to threaten. Well, two times in as many minutes. The early ball over the top, this one. All the way back for Kane, Vidmar. Garuccio. Squally, Fergate shifted on quickly. Kador deflected. Corner ball. Ultimately, an awkward one for the Mariners to deal with. It's good build up by Western United. The run inside, really nice sweeping movement right up the middle of the park for the Mariners. Oh, mistake. Could open the door here. Nisbet squares it up. Ballard! Wrong foot. Thomas Hewitt Bell. And the Mariners hit the front five minutes into the second half. And Max Ballard has just his second goal for the Premiership Chasers. Well, there was a point of appreciation from Max Ballard on the Harvey Norman replay. A poor giveaway in the middle of... A little bit careless, but gets away with it. Torres. Coming more into the game, the Colombian. Docker 
And they've got a man over here, Storm Roo. Across the face, oh, and Angel Torres with a great chance to make it two, but he's blazed it wide. Oh, brilliant chance for the Mariners. Here's one potential option as a striker. Here's Lockie Wales, and Riku Danzaki puts it wide. Big chance for Western. Well, understatement right there. Huge opportunity for the side to equalise. A really swift move forward. He has to withdraw that foot that's hanging out there otherwise. Here's Edmondson looking across the face or complete miscue. And Angel Torres sees his shot. Cannon off the crossbar and back out. He had such a good opportunity. Maybe that's why their XG is better than the Mariners. Meantime, Thea Harris finds the opening. Oh, that's a great goal. That's a stunner from Christian Thea Harris. Sending those Mariners fans into ecstasy. And how about the backflips, if you don't mind as well? A really, really super. And the points are probably now safe for the Mariners. A strong second half showing enough to secure all three points for the Mariners as they move back to the top of the league before jetting off for a gruelling midweek trip to Kyrgyzstan in the AFC Cup. Join us after the break as we bring you another three games from the Isuzu Ute League, including a dramatic Sydney derby. Welcome back to the Isuzu Ute A-League Highlights Show. Saturday's action continued at Suncorp Stadium in Queensland, where finals chasing Brisbane Raw hosted Newcastle Jets. Sat eighth on the ladder and five points behind the top six, Ruben Zadkovic's Raw side are still in the race for finals football, but knew a win over the Jets would be vital in order to maintain pressure on the sides above them. Meanwhile, Newcastle arrived in Brisbane in search of back-to-back -back wins for the first time this season, while striker Apostolos Stamatolopoulos would equal the Jets' club record for most goals scored in a season, should he find the back of the net. Your match commentators at Suncorp Stadium are Andy Harper and Ben Homer. O'Shea looking to get onto that left boot. He finds Berenguer instead. Can they find that avenue to goal? Henry Hall goes down. It's going to be a corner kick. He's saying he was felled here by Dane Ingham. Remember, Dane Ingham was the uh, centre of some controversy in that Unite round, Clack, Tom Waddingham. Now Brown around the outside. Brown finds Burke Gilroy. And it was the Newcastle Jets junior who very nearly... And he opted to find Brown. Waddingham making himself known in the box. It's Henry Hoare. And now Berenguer. How did Brisbane not open the scoring? There were four raw players. And incredibly, it's still nil-nil. Newcastle Heartland didn't have the answer at the end of it. But the lead-up was good. But they do have to watch it. You know, Newcastle aren't going to muck around in the transition. There's Dematilopoulos there. He can be the game winner for the Jets. Taylor shifting it left and right. Clayton Taylor has arrowed it into the bottom corner. He's got goals in back-to-back -back matches. And Newcastle have stunned Suncorp Stadium. Clayton Taylor, I think, has stunned himself. It's 1-0 to the Jets. Chris Bowling, you can see bottom of screen. Set piece, coach Stamatolopoulos. There is sweet 16 for Stamatolopoulos. It's a record equaling goal. The most goals in a season by a Newcastle Jet. And now Aldred. Well, he got himself in a pickle. Stamatolopoulos bearing down on goal. He has got Piscopo. He uses Reno, who takes on Aldred, and he did almightily well, the Brisbane Raw captain. Needed to. Saved his own blushes. There's no, no doubt in my mind that Archie Goodwin has something very special to Delivery offer. is dangerous, and Ryan Scott, the informed goalkeeper. I believe that was... The Jets goalkeeper, Ryan Scott, who's now punching it away. O'Shea kept it down. Now a chance for Truen. Newcastle desperate. Brisbane 
Wasteful. So Newcastle damaging Brisbane's finals hopes with a 2-0 win as Apostolos Stamatolopoulos moved to within two goals of Golden Boot leader Bruno Fornaroli. Saturday's action came to a head at Allianz Stadium as Sydney FC and the Western Sydney Wanderers faced off in the Sydney Derby. Bumped down into fifth spot thanks to MacArthur's win earlier in the round, Sydney FC came into the contest looking to bounce back from a defeat last time out. As for the Wanderers, well, defeat last time out means Marco Redan's side are now nervously monitoring the teams behind them as they look to secure a spot in the finals, whilst they're also out for revenge against the old enemy, given the last meeting between these two sides resulted in a humiliating 4-1 home loss for the Wanderers. Your match commentators at Allianz Stadium are Daniel McBreen and Robbie Thompson as well now Sapsford opportunity here for the Wanderers Perias it's a oh. great ball off oh, the post from Antonsen he should have scored Sapsford that's a great touch gets it back from Antonsen here come the Wanderers again the early cross Antonsen the chance to make amends blasts over goodness me from one end to the other a little bit fortuitous on the last occasion, but to be sure, see when they do get through, they can cause problems. And here's Sydney in behind this time with Grant, the square ball, it's an own goal, but it won't count. Well, there you see, yep, he's gone a little too early. And Thomas Beedling will breathe a huge sigh of relief. Amazingly, lets that go again, and that's a great ball over the top for Piraeus. Antonsen in the middle, Dylan Piraeus. Still going, oh! Post. Dylan Perez. Well, the flag did go up. That looked pretty close. Yeah, uh, it, it was touch and go. Having a word with Gabriel Kler now. It's taken short. In it comes, back post, Fabio! Well, it's a four presentable chance. For Fabio, probably the best of the lot, really, for a player of that prowess with his head. He had Sonny Kittle charging up the right-hand side. And now Sydney will look to make them pay. Lolly, Joe Lolly on the left. Pumped out, Fabio this time. Well, he couldn't miss. Fabio finally gets the ball in the back of the net. He celebrates with the Sydney FC supporters behind the goal. The Sky Blues finally have a derby goal at the new Alliance. Simmons, the cross back in, it's a great ball, back pass! Oh, they've done it! Western Sydney, and it's Zach Sapsford again! Unbelievable! His third A-League goal, and they've all come in the derby. Unbelievable scenes. In the 95th minute. Here we go again. Caceres. The cross, back post, Kaczarski. Oh! A quite incredible finish to a frantic Sydney derby as Jaden Kaczarski's 98th minute goal not only secured the three points, but also guaranteed the Sky Blues a spot in this year's final series. And the final match of round 25 took place at Amy Park where Melbourne City hosted bottom side Perth Glory. The Wanderers' loss in the Sydney derby now presented 7th place Melbourne City with the chance to close the gap to 6th down to just one point ahead of the two sides meeting in the penultimate round of the season. As for Perth, well, defeat to Adelaide last time out saw the club extend their winless run to seven matches, while they also now sit bottom of the ladder. Your match commentators at Amy Park are Grace Gill and Simon Hill. Picked up by Nattel again. McLaren shows early and goes near post, and it's off the post. Well, that was some super sharp work.
by both Leo Natel and then Jamie McLaren, and he was only inches away. Well, half a breath. The delivery, first of all, to find McLaren pierces the defence of Perth Glory. And a swivel on the spot, too, from Jamie McLaren. Well, that would have been some introduction back into the start inside. Places it out in front of Leo Natel, who's around Jacob Muir. Leo Natel! What a brilliant finish by the Brazilian. Melbourne City have the reward for that early dominance. And it's a thunderous goal scored by Leo Natel. Still plenty of time for Perth Glory to turn this one around. That's a loose ball, though. And Melbourne City pounce. It's two! You can't give Tolgate Arslan that sort of room. He wasn't going to miss from there, even though he was still a fair way out. And this has all gone horribly wrong in the space of two minutes for Perth Glory. Tolgay Arslan's 11th of the season. Well, what did Perth Glory have in response? They won only once on the road this season. That was to the Western Sydney Wanderers back in January, but they're really up against it here. Lecky in towards the near post. It's three, you know. I fancy that's going to be an own goal. Scored by Caleb Majeka Dumbi. Matt Lecky gets the congratulations. And whoever's name goes on the score sheet, it's three for Melbourne City. And Perth Glory might be dead and buried already. Leo Mattel spots that little sliver of space for Tolgay Arslan. It is four. It goes from bad to worse for Perth Glory. Tolgay Arslan has a double. And City are out of sight. And Glory facing a real drubbing here at Amy Park, potentially. Such balance and composure. It could be in again here. Make that five! Leo Natal has a double. Oh, this is horrible. Horrible for Perth. But wonderful, wonderful for Melbourne City. And now the counter could be on. Lovely turn by Arslan. Lovely slip ball through by Lecky. Leo Natel to square it up. They're queuing up here. McLaren joins in on the scoring act. It's six of the best for Melbourne City. And Jamie McLaren, he's not had the happiest of campaigns, has his ninth of the season. And Perth Glory have been undressed defensively once again. David Jugarkovic looking to get in on the scoring act. It's Tolgay Arslan. Patrick. A round dozen for the season. And his first treble in Melbourne City colours. What an afternoon for Tolgay Arslan. Here's Leo Natel. He's seen Tolgay Arslan get his hat trick. I'm sure he'd love one as well. City have got numbers here. Jugarkovic. It's eight. Could be a new A-League men's record. Steven Jugarkovic joins in the fun for Melbourne City. And Perth Glory have been utterly obliterated. A quite incredible scoreline at Amy Park has Mel... A quite incredible scoreline at Amy Park as Melbourne City scored seven or more in a game for the third time this season to move to within a point of the Wanderers in sixth while also breaking an A-League's record in the process. That's all for this week on the Isuzu Ute A-League Highlight Show. We'll see you next time.